Oftentimes when you take a photo or a scan of a sketch, your image might look dulled down, but this is easy enough to fix in Photoshop. If you have a high quality camera or a smartphone, put your drawing on a flat surface and then try taking a photo on that same flat plane to avoid warping. Shooting in indoor natural lighting is usually best and will be the easiest to edit in Photoshop. Or if you have a good scanner, you can scan your drawing. Make sure the settings when you scan are not overexposed. It will be easier to have a darker image that we can brighten up than one that's overexposed and has lost stroke detail. I'm going to demo on a scan of my sketch, but the same process can be applied for photos. To start, I'm just going to make a copy of my scan so that if I ever need to, I can access that original file. Now I'll just drag and drop my file into Photoshop and begin editing it. As we can see, I accidentally scanned my image in upside down. And to fix this, I just go to Image, Image Rotation, and from there I can click Different Options. In this case, I'll turn it 90 degrees clockwise twice. Now that my image is right side up, I see I need to straighten it because it's crooked. So I'm grabbing the rectangular marquee tool and I'm selecting the area I want to turn. Now I'm grabbing the move tool and as you can see as I hover around this corner this little arrow becomes bent and clicking down I can rotate the image slightly to straighten it. Once I'm happy with that I press enter on my keyboard and then I click select and then deselect. Now with the crop tool, I can go ahead and just crop out everything I don't want. Now it's time to edit the image's color and contrast. To start, I go to Image, Mode, Grayscale. See how it just makes it more of a neutral gray? Now I'm just going to go to Image, Mode, RGB Color, so that I'm able to apply colors to it again when I want to. Now look as I grab my eyedropper tool and select that background color. See how it's not nearly bright enough? We want that background color to be closer to white for ease of coloring later. Our first step to achieving this will be by going to Image, Adjustments, Levels. Now see this space on the right? That's going to affect the white of our paper. So you can just drag that slider over to make it brighter. And over here we can drag this slider over to make our lines darker. There are no exact numbers you should use as every image will require a different amount of tinkering. So just move the sliders around until you have a better contrast than before without losing any quality of your sketch. You can also try Image, Adjustments, Brightness Contrast and move around the sliders there. To get that extra level of brightness, you can go to Select, and then color range. And from there with the eyedropper tool, with sampled colors selected from the dropdown, we can click the background color and press OK. Now as you can see, Photoshop has selected everything that is that color. It won't be a perfect selection, and you can play around with it until you're satisfied. But now coming over to the color panel and clicking this top square, I can pick up the whitest white possible. Then I just take a soft brush make it bigger, and color in that background. Now I just go to Select, Deselect, and see how that brightened up that background? Now I notice I want to edit the contrast again to match that brightness of the background. So again I go to Image, Adjustments, Levels, and like before, I'll just push around the sliders. Now I like this, but it's a little too contrasty for me. So I'll grab my rectangular marquee tool and select the entire image. Then I'll press Edit, Copy. Now over here in my history panel, I'll go back a couple steps before I edited the levels. Now I'll press Edit, Paste to paste that more contrasty version I just copied. And as you can see, because I pasted it, it's been made into its own new layer. So I have both versions I kind of like here. I want to come up with a happy medium between them. So with the top layer selected, I go over here where it says Opacity, 
and I'm just going to bring the layer's opacity down until I'm happy with it. I think I like this more subtle contrast better. Now that I'm happy with this, I just right-click a layer and press Flatten Image. This will bring the image back to one layer. Now you may find that your image has some unwanted lines or little specks in it. To clean these up, you can use the Patch tool. All you have to do is circle it and then drag it to a cleaner area. You can clean up any dots this way. So now as you can see, these edits make a really nice improvement from the original scan. Now if you prefer, you can actually edit non-destructively as it's called. This means you can edit certain effects regardless of whether you've surpassed your history state's allowance. To work in this way, you would convert your image into a smart object. Then you would create separate adjustment layers for each change you make, editing in the same manner as we did before. Some artists prefer to work this way to keep all options available to them at all times. I personally prefer to just keep my history states large enough to go back in time and copy and paste if I really want to or need to. I find that that approach actually helps me be more decisive and commit to the effects I'm applying to the sketch. Experiment with both methods to see what works best for you.